So today we are looking at formation of soils over parent materials. But what are parent materials? What are parent materials? Organisms could be. What are parent materials? The soils are formed from some substrate. That substrate we call parent materials. Yeah? What type of things you can think about that the soils can be formed upon? Huh? Plants? Rocks. The main one, yeah? So rocks decompose, they fragment, they are weathered, and they form regolite. And over this regolite, these are, this is what we consider a parent material. There are organic parent materials. It means if you have, for example, swamps, places where you have bogs and saturated conditions, lakes that are dying, that there is a lot of organic deposition. And you form these organic deposits, which are based mostly on plants and, uh, and also from bryophyta, some sphagnum. Yeah? So this deposit plant material, uh, this also can be uh, um, Parent material, organic parent material for soil formation. But mostly when we talk about parent material, we are talking about what are the rocks that started all the process. You know, those rocks, they are fragmented, weathered, and then the, all the chemical transformations and biological transformations that happen there leads to the formation of soils. So we have to understand from the ground up, from the, from the start, to understand soil formation, we need to look at about what are parent materials, okay? How different they are and how these differences are influencing soil formation. Okay, so the, here's the concept of soil formation again. We have uh, parent material being uh, conditioned by organisms, climate, time and topography and that is the definition a part of integral part of the definition of, of soils yeah so you probably seen some when they construct the roads they make all these trenches and you can see all the profile from the soil up to the rocks and you can usually see that there is a, a gradient you know there is a gradient of decomposition where to the bottom, you will see the more original rocks, the rocks in their original state. And as you approach the surface, you probably will see that these rocks are more fragmented, they have a change in color, and they are up to the top soil, you will see that they are already this mass of, that is completely unrecognizable comparing to the original parent material. So you will have here in the surface, let me grab my, laser pointer so you, if you look at this topsoil it's really hard to see anything related to the original rocks that where they, they were formed from yeah? but there are properties of these soils up here that are resulting from the original parent material so the type of rock will condition mostly is this a more the texture of this soil is more sandy, more clay. The type of clay that they have, is it expansive clay or it's a kaolinite clay? The type of clays are really dependent on the parent material. Is there more acidic material? Is it a material that is rich in nutrients? So all these things are conditioning whatever processes are happening here that condition the, form, the formation of these soils over time. Yeah? So what type of rocks there are? You've seen that before. Igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic. What are igneous? From the volcano. Mountainous magma. Lagma, consolidated magma. Okay, the magma cools down from volcanic activities. It could be outside, extrusive, or it can be cooling down near the surface under pressure, intrusive rocks. Yeah? So igneous rocks are the ones who have the primary minerals. The minerals that are formed from the magma itself, molten 
magma. S uh, sedimentary rocks, what are they? If you break down any type of rocks, layer them around, and you have any process of cementation, compaction, and they become a new rock by cementation, this is what we call sedimentary rocks. Yeah? Metamorphic rocks. When you have sedimentary rock and then you have a new process of like volcanic activity or if they're bearing down by uh, tectonic plates and these rocks are being heated up and under high pressure and by that heat they change the nature, that's why you get metamorphic rocks. So they resemble the sedimentary rocks, but their properties and the type of minerals they contain are changed by pressure and temperature. Okay? So these are basically the th three types of rocks that we have. So igneous rocks form from ma magma, uh, and they are, uh, for example, you have granite, diorite, and basalt. Yeah? In Oman, you will have what type of igneous rocks? There's a lot of granite. Yeah. What else do you have here? Ophiolites also. Ophiolites are very common. Ophiolites are not common worldwide. There are only few places on the planet that has Ophiolites. Oman is one of them. Okay. And you have basalt. Yeah. Basalt they're cooled by extrusion. So if it's the same granite or whatever uh, uh, intrinsic rock, when they are cooled outside the volcano, then it, this is a, a basalt. Yeah, normally it's a basalt. But there are other, you know, um, other types of extrusive rocks. Yeah. Um, in the igneous rocks, one of the most important things is the type of minerals. You have primary minerals, and the, when these primary minerals are weathered chemically, they become secondary minerals. But in the original rocks, you get primary minerals. So if the original rocks are composed by primary minerals, so such as quartz, feldspars, biotite, and algae, so these are igneous rocks. If you find these primary minerals, it's a good indication that you're dealing with igneous rocks. Normally, igneous rocks, they are harder to weather. They are weathered slower than sedimentary or metamorphic rocks. Because of the conditions they are formed, they, they have more uh, stability of chemical stability of their uh, constituents. The primary minerals, they tend to be slower and be decomposed than other secondary minerals. Yep. Which one? The, this is the types of rocks. Here are the minerals that form them, okay? The rocks in itself, if you look closely, like say, when you look at the granite, you see there are, there are patchy behaviors, yeah? That patchy behaviors is different colors, like spotted, yeah? That small spots, they're composed from different minerals. If you individually analyze the minerals, this is what you can come from. You have different types of minerals that are forming the rock, yeah? Examples of rock, and they are composed of examples of minerals. Yeah, they are, you know, a mixture of those minerals. Is that clear? So the minerals, when you talk about, they have a chemical formula, a composition. Whereas when you talk about rocks, it's a mix and match of those original minerals. Clear now? Okay. So here is an example of granite and basalt. And just to make a clear uh, breakdown between intrusive and extrusive. Yeah? These are formed under pressure before they emerge on the surface. And these are formed after they are expelled from the volcanoes. So if they get out of the volcano and they cool down outside, the same type of minerals will change their nature. A little bit you know the composition will change if they're formed under pressure and high heat or if they're formed by quick cooling in atmospheric normal atmospheric pressures so these type of conditions will strongly shape 
the type of formation, the rock formation that you have. So the same type of volcanic material can originate different rocks if they are intrusive or extrusive. Both of them are igneous. Yeah, Both of them are igneous, originating from the molten magma, but the properties change by the way in they are formed. And you tend to have extrusive rocks being easier also to weather than intrusive rocks overall yeah but can you have exceptions sedimentary rocks yeah so what are sedimentary rocks we just talk about them let's say from the igneous rocks if you have if you break it down by physical weathering small pieces deposit they're transported deposit by water by wind by whatever yeah by glaciers not here in oman not, not glaciers but in other countries by glaciers is an important thing yeah they are deposits and then in this deposit they are compacted and maybe their water is bringing carbonates or um, silica or other things that will cement this material mostly carbonates and this cementation makes a new rock so this rock is sedimentary because they are originated from sediments of other rocks. Okay. In Oman, we have a lot of sedimentary rocks. So if you if you go for the expressway, what do you have? Carbon. Yeah. Carbonate. You have cal all these calcite formations that you have. Yeah, dolomitic. Uh, calcites you see these yellow patchy rocks who is here from geology maybe you can help us yeah go ahead yeah yeah so the, the you have this in you know, our hood here you even have this uh, um, patchy conglomerates that are over this uh, calcite older calcite yeah what they call the inconformity, no? All right, so we have a lot of these uh, sediments. Most of the sediments in Oman are coming from marine sediments, okay? So how does it come that marine sediments come to the surface? Explosion. Huh? Explosion? Explosion. Exposure, well, how? Geology? How the marine sediments come to the surface? Plate tectonics. Yeah, plate tectonics is a huge part of it. How does it come? The plate tectonics move sediments up. By transition. Uh, huh? Transition and regeneration. And the sea level is rising. Not about sea level. It's about the geological uplifting. Have you heard about geological uplifting? One tectonic plate is going inside another tectonic plate. They, because they're moving in the same direction, one needs to go down and the other one needs to go up. So if you have marine sediments, and because of this overposition of tectonic plates, then some of them come higher to the surface. This is where you have the coast of Oman, the Albatina coast coming all with these sedimentary rocks. The rocks that are formed over marine sediments and they are elevated by uh, tectonic, uh, plate tectonics where they're over, um, they're overlapping with each other. They can be formed both of primary and secondary minerals. Yeah, there is a process of compaction and sedimentation. Questions about this? All right, this is how they look like. They look very stripy and uh, because of the sedimentation process. Yeah, with the sedimentation process, you get layers. And these layers lead for you to have this stripy behavior of the rocks. rocks what are metamorphic rocks 
Exactly. Yeah. So you have sedimentary rocks being transformed or igneous rocks being further transformed and forming metamorphic rocks. Yeah. Examples are marble that you use for constructions, quartzite, slate, gneiss, and schist. They still have some patterns of um, layers that are coming from their sedimentary rocks originally, and but they are changed uh, in their nature by the pressure and the heat. So here are the cycle. Here is the cycle of formation of uh, different rocks. First, you have the magma, which is cooling and melting, forming igneous rocks. Those re igneous rocks, they can be fragmented and form sediments. Yeah. The sediments can be compacted and cemented into form sedimentary rocks. These sedimentary rocks can also be heated and uh, submitted to pressure and form metamorphic rocks, and then can be further weathered back into sediments, forming sedimentary rocks, or can be melted again and be formed into magma and form igneous rocks again. So the elemental composition of the Earth's crust is mostly made of oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, and potassium. So you would expect that rocks are also made of this. This is the composition of rocks. So if the rocks form the minerals of the soil, clays, sand, and silt, what you expect is oxygen, silicon, and aluminum will be the ones that are forming the minerals in the soil also. Iron, calcium, sodium, and potassium are the ones that come next yeah, in order forming soil minerals. Now you have here, these are tombstones, yeah? tombstones in a cemetery. One tombstone is quietly, they're from the same time. Yeah? One is well preserved and the other one is really, really degraded. What happened here? What is the processes behind this? Why do you think one is preserved? and the other one is degraded. Weathering. weathering. What does it mean, weathering? Uh, huh? By winds. Okay. Rain. Okay, what else? Temperature. Temperature. And the erosion. So it's a decomposition of the rock, right? It's a decomposition of the rock. And you have one, some types of rock decomposed slow and the other ones decompose quickly. This slate is a, a metamorphic rock, so it's subjected to temperature, pressures, and makes it more resistant, okay? It makes it more resistant. Whereas you have marble, also metamorphic, it's more porous material. And the composition of the rock here has a lot of carbonates. Just so happens that the carbonates are very susceptible for acid dissolution. So if you add acid to here, what happens? Have, have you uh, tried to add acid to uh, soils here in Oman? It's one of the tests we do to test if we have carbonates on the soil. Okay, if you add acid, what happens to the carbonates? They fizzle, they make CO2, they dissolve, and the resulting is CO2. The calcium carbonates become uh, CO2 and because of the acid dissolution. In the rain, there is acid. What is the pH of the rain? Normal range of pHs from rain. Yeah, you can get pH lower even than six, five point something, depending on the. Why does the the rain? Why would you expect that the rain has acid pHs? Something on the air is dissolving on the water in the rain. Something from the air is dissolving on the water and making the rain becomes acid. What is it that dissolves in the water? 
Carbon dioxide and it makes carbonic acid in water. So the atmosphere con contains about 400 ppm of carbon dioxide. Also, other things will dissolve if you have contamination. Yeah, if you have contamination from sulfur, you get sulfuric acid. Or nitrates, you get nitric acid. This is acid rain. But naturally, without being con having contamination, the CO2 will dissolve in the water. Naturally, the water from the rain will be acidic because of the dissolution of CO2. So just by exposure to rain, there is a chemical dissolution of the carbonates on this rock, whether in the other ones it doesn't. The same thing will happen in the soil. Even though these things are taking, taking place on the long term, there's uh, several years that, uh, that are thousands of years that are, uh, this process are taking place, the origin of the parent material conditions the speed in which these materials are going to be um, decomposed in weather. The other thing that is really, really important, just a highlight, no need to memorize this table. Yeah, No need to memorize. So every time you get a big table, the students go, is that going to go in the exam? I get this all the time. Yeah? The principles here are important. Yeah? The principles, not uh, directly memorizing. If you have primary minerals, different primary minerals coming from the igneous rocks, as they are changed over time, they originate secondary minerals. Yeah. All of clays in the soils, aluminum silicates, yeah, they are secondary minerals originated from primary minerals. Depending on the type of primary minerals, you will get some secondary minerals that are more resistant or less resistant to weathering. Okay. So these ones here coming from uh, the first three examples are giving rise to more resistant secondary minerals. And the ones on the bottom are giving rise to less resistant secondary minerals. So there is a range in which these uh, minerals can be decomposed over time. So what happens if, if the secondary minerals get weathered? So if you weather primary minerals and you mix secondary minerals, if you weather secondary minerals, what, what do you get late, uh, after that? You get the, their elemental composition, you get salts, yeah? And what happens to those salts? They can be removed by leaching, by the water. So these rocks are being slowly transformed into their elemental composition. If the rocks contain calcium, they will become calcium ions, phosphate, phosphate ions, potassium, potassium ions. The process of decomposition ultimately leads for the complete disappearance or removal of those mineral formations overall. But this is a long, long process and there are transformations in between. And the transformations is the rocks are decomposed, releasing those primary minerals. Those primary minerals are changed over time into secondary minerals. And the secondary minerals will over time just completely be degraded and become their elements. And those elements can have, can have any fate. If it's some element that does not have any volatile compound, then you have any atmospheric compound uh, com uh, component on the cycle. For example, uh, calcium will not have any atmospheric component. So the only way of losing that calcium is by water you know, or wind. But other elements will do have um, some uh, atmospheric component, for example, nitrogen. Yeah, phosphate will have phosphorus will have a very low atmospheric component, but they still you have some like phosphine, for example. Some components, when they fully degrade, will go to the air, some to the water, some will make precipitates on the soil. Okay, salts precipitates on the soil. So. The concept of weathering, you already told me, is the decomposition of the rocks. Yeah? The continuous decomposition of these rocks. 
the rocks are being degraded into small particles and these small particles are the ones that ultimately form the topsoil so you can see that gradient that I was talking about you can have regolith which are more related to the original rock just more more physical weathering happening and then there is a gradient in where these rocks are being slowly changed into the topsoil formation that you have here So we have two processes, we have physical weathering and we have chemical weathering. Physical weathering being fragmentation of the rock, yeah? physical versus chemical weathering. Think about paper, if you get a piece of paper, physical weathering would be you chopping down that piece of paper. Chop it down, chop down, at the end you still have paper, yeah? it's just small pieces. This is physical weathering. Anything that can break down the material into small pieces, that is physical weathering. So, even though you break down the rock, you still have the same primary minerals. You still have the original minerals that you have on the rock. So, physical weathering is only physical action. It does not change the nature of whatever it is, the, the original rock. Chemical weathering, on, on the other hand, is Take that paper, burn it. Okay? There's a chemical reaction happening there. Oxidation. All right? The resulting is what you have now is not paper anymore. It's ash. It's something else. Okay? Chemical transformation will change the nature of whatever the minerals are. Physical weathering will not change the nature. It's just fragmentation into small pieces. Both of them are important because chemical reactions are usually surface reactions. And the smaller the particles are, the more surface you get. If you have a big rock and you have chemical weathering on the outside, you still have all the inside of the rock which is not being affected. But if you have physical weather that is breaking that rock, now the chemical changes can ha happen in the majority of the volume of that material. So both things are important. Fragmentation leads for more exposure of area of the material for chemical weathering. So here is a resume. Phys uh, uh, physical weathering, disintegration, decrease in physical size. There is no change in the chemical composition. Grinding effect, yeah, grinding any physical effect that you have. Um, chemical weathering, on the other hand, you have decompositions, change in the chemical properties, uh, solubilization of materials being released, you know, new minerals can be formed, and usually it needs water. Yeah? Water is always the solvent, the media in which chemical reactions happen. Without water, you cannot have chemical weathering. Most of the chemical reactions are happening in the presence of water. Some of them, just by interface with air, can happen, but the speed of all these is really conditioned by having water in the system. The, the, the moisture factor is important, especially in desert climates like here in Oman. If you have soils with very low moisture content, you will expect that these processes are decreased. Yeah? The lack of moisture in the soils makes that the minerals are being decomposed at a slower rate. Where you have very moist soils, you will have this being accelerated. So, physical weather can be caused by different agents. Yeah? So, the different agents can lead to fragmentation of the rock. First of one is temperature. How do you think the temperature affects the you know, fragmentation of rocks? How temperature can cause fragmentation? Expansion. Expansion. Expansion, okay. So what happens is when the sunlight hits the top layer of the rock, that part which is hot will expand. But the inner part which is still cold will not expand in the same rate. So 
there is this scaling happening. Fragments, layers of rock are being uh, uh, separated. Yeah, so it's called exfoliation. There are layers. The outer layers are separating from the inner layers just because of temperature changes. And this happens a lot if these are exposed to sunlight or is there high temperature between high temperature difference between day and night. You heat up on the day, cool at night, and this heating and cooling leads to strong fragmentation of the rocks. You see this very nicely if you go for walks here in Al Hod, uh, uh, old Al Hod, you have all these hills, and if you look at the rocks, you can you can see there in the surface the layers are really aligned with the surface because of this expansion. You can even even by hand you can remove those exfoliations. Uh, happening on these rocks. Abrasion by water, ice, and wind. By water and ice, I think it's very easy for you guys to understand. If you walk in the wadis, you will see all these rocks, even the conglomerates, being polished by the water. The water is carrying sediments. The sediments are abrasing slowly every time that the water runs. It's bringing other particles and the particles, particles have friction together, and that friction will remove some of the uh, uh, minerals from the rock. So there's a, a slow process of um, abrasion happening by uh, this uh, water movement. Not by the water itself, but because the water is carrying other things that are uh, slowly shipping the rock away. Yeah. Wind also. It's also very typical. You can you can easily see that you have some rocks in the bottom part. They are like a making like the hourglass shape. The bottom part normally because the the winds close to the surface carry more particles, and they hit those rocks and they are eroding the rocks from below. So you get those rocks which have this hour hourglass shape because the winds are carrying particles and hitting from below. So the abrasion by wind also will feel very natural for you. By ice, I don't think you guys are very familiar with that, but if you go for Europe and USA and all the northern hemisphere close to the uh, uh, subtropical areas, in geological ages, these were glaciers. Yeah? And even if you go for mountains today in Europe and USA and in, the, in Chile, in the south hemisphere, they still have glaciers. And these glaciers are rivers of ice. If you see them like a time lapse, if you take one photograph a day, you see that they're moving down the hill like a river, just very slowly. But that movement down makes that they are carrying rocks on the bottom of the glacier. And they are uh, pressing rocks once against each other in this grinding movement. Yeah? So the ice is also, in many landscapes, a huge form of physical weathering. Just by pressing and sliding and pressing rocks against each other, with huge strength and uh, huge weight. Yeah? So glaciers also uh, are a huge way in which these rocks are grinded down, not chemically changed, but just grinded down physically into small particles. All right. Physical weathering, fragmentation, here exfoliation that you can see, chemical weathering. When you see color change, most likely there is some oxidation reaction happening or some dissolution. So these color changes are showing some chemical transformations in the rock. So chemical weathering, chemical transformations, physical weathering, just breakdown. Plants and animals, yeah? Plants and animals will also play a big role in this. You can see here an example of roots of a tree that is going inside cracks of the rock looking for water. But these roots also, they expand. And as they expand, they fragment those rocks. Plants are hugely important. Plants and microbes are hugely important. More on the chemical weathering than on the physical weathering side. Plants deposit carbon through their roots. Microbes will exudate acids also. They will deliberately weather rocks chemically to get the nutrients from them. 
There are many studies now that even microbes that are directly associated with the roots, they will search and colonize minerals that contain the nutrients they want. Yeah? Um, and the other curse from soil plant environment, I usually show a slide with uh, mycorrhiza also uh, colonizing phosphate rocks and decomposing those fo uh, phosphate rocks. But this is the slides from, from uh, built before. I don't have them here to show. But plants and animals and microbes, they are hugely important in chemical weathering. Plants and animals also important on physical weathering. Animals will dig, make holes, make caves, open cracks so you know water can come in, expansion can happen, and this can break down. Chemical weathering, it's now we're talking about chemical transformation. Remember the paper example? Physical will be just chopping the paper down, chemical will be burning it up. It's a completely chemical transformation of the substances. Here are some agents that are related to chemical weathering. Reaction with water. Actually, water will always be present. You know, for any other chemical process, you will need water in these substances, but directly the water by itself is causing some reaction. And two of them are hydration and hydrolysis. The water, it's H2O, but it can dissociate in hydrogen and hydroxyls. The hydrogen in the hydroxyls can now combine with the minerals in the rock. And by combining with the minerals in the rock, then they can cause these to break down. The change of the, the, the uh, disposition of charges in these uh, minerals can make them separate into different and change their chemical nature yeah? change the chemical nature of these compounds just by the water itself hydration and hydrolysis yeah? oxygen how does oxygen changes oxidation comes from oxygen yeah like burning is an oxidation reaction you're just oxidizing, yeah? But oxidation reactions, even though it's named after oxygen, chemically it has more to do with electron transfer, yeah? Reduction means you gain one electron. Oxidation means you're losing electrons, yeah? So when you have oxygen on the system, it tends to rob electrons from the substances and therefore you have oxidation reactions. Acids, acids will work on a similar way from the hydrolysis from the water the hydrogen coming from the acid will combine with the substance and break down make them break down and organisms will you know use chemical reactions overall hydrolysis dissolution um, acid hydrolysis hydration they will use all these chemical reactions for a purpose yeah they will do these things deliberately trying to get whatever they need. If they need a nutrient, they will look for it. So here is an example of a chemical weather of a feldspar. Yeah. As the water moves to the soil, yeah, it will grab carbonic acid and other chemicals. It will reach the feldspar down below and it will start eating up those feldspars, dissolving it into its elemental composition. Really important that the composition of feldspars because this is where most of the potassium comes from. So the potassium for the plants, the plant nutrition, if you have high potassium in the soil, most likely coming from feldspars. So chemical reactions, we have hydration, hydrolysis, oxidation reduction, complexation, carbonation, and dissolution. Let's check the time. 8.44. You need a five minutes pause? Or continue? Continue. Let's go up to the end. All right. Hydration. It doesn't look like much, but just by covering some surface with water molecules already makes them dissociate from the from the other ones. So hydration by itself, it's a chemical change on the structure. 
irreversible sometimes. Yeah? You will make structurally the water becomes bound to surfaces. If you have ionic charges in the surfaces, it can attract uh, uh, water. Here is an example hydration of the hematite. Yeah. Hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is different from hydration. Hydration is the water molecule in its elemental form binding to the surface of minerals. Hydrolysis, on the other hand, is the dissociated water molecule. The dissociated means the water will separate into hydrogen and hydroxyls. Google is trying to help us. <laughs> so the, the dissociated form of water will now, the hydrogen or the, the hydroxyl will bind to uh, the chemical compounds. Usually you have an esteric bond, let's say a phosphate molecule is bound by the rest of the mineral. Yeah. And there is an eastern bound here. This eastern bound is breaking down and you have one positive charge on one side and one negative charge on the other side. Now the water molecule dissociated will have one hydrogen and one hydroxyl. This hydrogen and then hydroxyl will occupy one side of the structure and the hydroxyl the other side. And by satisfying both sides now, these two chemicals become stable. So it's a separation, a breakdown of two molecules. And this is only possible because you have the ions coming from the water to satisfy both charges. So this chemical reaction of breaking down of steric bonds by the, 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 the dissociated form of water, hydrogen and hydroxyls, this is called what we, this is what is called hydrolysis. Yeah. Clear? It's just a chemical reaction where there is a separation of two molecules and the dissociated ions from the water will come in and make those molecules stable. No, the reaction is not. Yeah. But if I add a formula in the exam and I said, what reaction is this corresponding to? By, by knowing the principles behind hydrolysis, you can say, okay, this is a hydrolysis, not an oxidation. All right? You, know, you should know the names. Yeah, and the names you should know for the exam of the chemical reactions. All right? Hydrolysis of feldspar? No, if I show you this formula and I, I, I ask you in the exam, is this uh, oxidation, hydration, hydrolysis? Yeah, and then you choose the correct one. Yeah, I just show, you don't have to say what is the name of the reaction, but if you, can you recognize what type of reaction it is based on the formula, all right? But you should know that all these reactions are possible in soils or the, in the weathering of minerals in soils. Let's go. Dissolution. What is dissolution? What things can you dissolve in water normally? Salts. Yeah. Actually, salts are any compounds that you can buy this, uh, dissolving in water, they can separate in their ionic forms. It means that, let's say you have sodium chloride and you dissolve it in water, in water. In the water, they're not sodium chloride anymore. They're sodium ions and chloride ions. Okay? Uh, so different minerals will have different solubility constants. They will be able to dissolve in water more or less. It means if you mix sodium chloride with water, a big amount of sodium chloride can be in the solution. If you mix calcium carbonate, depending on the pH, you will have less amount of calcium carbonate being able to dissolve in the water. The amount that will be staying precipitated and the amount that will stay in solution will be less in solution. Yeah, there is less solubility. So many minerals can be dissolved in water directly. Just by having water, they will separate 
into their ionic forms. These are the salts. In different minerals, different salts, precipitates, they will have different uh, solubility in different pHs. Okay, so what happens here is if you have water that is in acid pH, alkaline precipitates will dissolve. So if you just decrease the pH of the water, you will have a lot of dissolution coming just because these precipitates in the minerals, they are stable in alkaline conditions. If you have acid, it's just a dissolution process. It's not a hydrolysis, but it's because of the stability related to pH. So the solution is just like salt. Yeah. And then they become in their ionic forms. Yeah. If they do not become in their ionic forms, if they are just floating around, they are not dissolved, they are suspended. Yeah. So you have a suspension, for example, if you have clays in water, maybe they are not settling, but it's not a solution. It's not a solution, it's a suspension. Okay. Suspension is when these chemicals are separating into their ionic forms. So far, so good? Deep breath, let's continue. Examples here, yeah. Some salts can dissolve in water. How do you have mineral formations of salts? Yeah. How do you how do you gather that you have some geological layers that are salt, salt deposits? Why do you think there are you know salts salt deposits? Sometimes you have the accumulation of water and this water that has nowhere to go but to evaporate, like in lakes. So you do that once and again over time and they start building up salt. Yeah. For example, the Dead Sea is slowly evaporating and leaving behind salt. At some point, there will be only a salt deposit. And that salt deposit can be covered later on by other layers. And then at the end, you have all this uh, salts present on that region but it also there are some chemicals that are mixed with the soil that they are salts that they are not dissolved because of the environment okay if you have an alkaline precipitate and if you have a period of time where that soil is alkaline then this is not being dissolved but you have another period of time when the soil is becoming neutral or acidic and then those minerals can be dissolved in solution so this solution can happen just because of change of the environmental conditions. Sometimes there is not enough water. Sometimes there is an impediment for drainage. And then in another era, you will have that you have more water, change of pHs, change of weather, or maybe change, change of drainage uh, of the system. And then you will have the possibility of having this dissolution. Carbonation, yeah? Carbonation is the reactions they are mediated by the carbonic acid. Yeah. So if you have that the carbonic acid, the classical example is you have carbonate becoming bicarbonate. Carbonic acid, just CO2 dissolved in the water. And this carbonic acid will bind to uh, other molecules, change those molecules and incorporate themselves into those molecules. And this is carbonation. So you have here on uh, CO2, water, and carbonate becoming uh, bicarbonate. Yeah, here, here you go. Carbonate, this is the calcium carbonate, carbonic acid, calcium, and bicarbonate. This is the, the example I was giving. Oxidation reduction, yeah? Like the example of the paper when you burn it. Oxidation reactions are the reactions where the, uh, there is a loss of electrons, yeah? usually mediated by oxygen. So if you have oxy conditions, you will have more oxidation reactions. There are some elements that are really prone to be oxidized and reduced, and others that are not. Yeah? So especially iron and manganese minerals they are really prone to be oxidized or reduced 
Here's an example of oxidation of iron. So if you have even iron 2 or iron 3 salts, when you alkalinize them, naturally they will form hydroxides. Yeah? They're naturally they will form hydroxides. And by that formation, you will have that there is an oxidation process. The, the iron is losing electrons and therefore it's being oxidized or gaining electrons and being reduced depending on the conditions. If you have anaerobic conditions, low oxygen, the iron can be reduced, it can gain electrons. If you have aerobic conditions, you will have oxidation, so the, uh, the iron will be losing electrons. You can see that easily in soils. When you have near the water table, you have mottling. Yeah, have you, maybe if I even search here for mottling. Images. Yeah. So you see this pattern in soil where you have patches of red, yellowish color and patches of gray color is because you have iron minerals. And if they're near the water table, some parts of the soil will be oxidized, some parts of the soil will be more reduced. Yeah, so this oxidation reaction can lead for this patchy formation of different types of minerals in the soil. All right, complexation here. Yeah, so. Normally, if you have something that is binding covalently for other substances, then you have this complexation reaction. Yeah? So organic acids, for example, oxalic acid, citric acid, exudates from the plants. The plants are producing this. Microbes are producing those acids, and those acids will bind to other minerals in the soil and form their uh, molecular forms. Yeah? These molecular forms can be uh, cit uh, uh, calcium citrate, calcium oxalate, and so on and so forth. Yeah? So this could be uh, other minerals that are originated by the complexation. These complexation reactions, they are really important because many other types of precipitates, they are, con the, <clears throat> let's say, for example, calcium phosphate, or they are conditioned, the formation of calcium phosphate is conditioned for the, by the availability of calcium. The calcium will react with the phosphate and form calcium phosphate, apatite minerals, for example, yeah, or calcium phosphate. Now, if you have organic molecules, the um, organic molecules can now complex the calcium. And because you do not have the calcium, now you will have the release, the dissolution of the phosphate ions. So they can, there is, the solution loses all the calcium, so the, there is a potential that the calcium that is bound to the phosphate will dissolve more because you are removing those counter ions from the solution. So these complexation reactions, sometimes they are helping in condition the other reactions happening on the soil, like dissolution, because it's able to rob some of the counter ions that are forming these other precipitates. A bit too much, but just keep in mind, this, these are ways in which microbes and plants can affect the chemistry on the soil. This is all for today. Questions? Moodle. In the Moodle, the group leader, only the group leader in the Moodle, you can submit. Yeah. A word.